Welcome to part 2 of my comprehensive Game & Watch Bucket Guide. If you haven't already watched part 1, we went over how Bucket actually works as far as the mechanics of the move go. In this part, we will be going over competitive tips and tricks, and how to use the Bucket effectively, as well as play effectively against it. A charged Bucket is one of the best moves in the entire game. Fill a Bucket with a few fireballs, and suddenly you went from low tier to a better version of Ryu where one mistake equals swift death at 50%, or less. Remember, even a minimum bucket is a deadly two-frame option with power on par with a standard smash attack, so keep that in mind when playing the Fox, Robin, or Mega Man matchup. Bucket is a precious move and should not be wasted. Try to set it up instead. You can true combo into Bucket from down throw at low to mid percents, and out of a space jab at almost any percent depending on rage and the opponent's weight. It must be spaced to the very tip of your jab, as that is the hitbox that does the most hit stun. If not, your opponent will be able to power shield your Bucket. For example, you'll need around 130% or more rage for it to work on a heavy like Rob but you won't need any rage for a lightweight like Sheik. Certain heavies, and Lucas for some reason, will have 5 or 6 frames of lag on their hard landing. This makes rage and spacing less necessary because they are floaty enough that jab 1 will lift them off the ground and force them to go in through their hard landing lag, giving you enough time to hit them with the bucket regardless. Don't forget, since this setup is for higher percents anyway, if you wanted to, you could simply wait out the power shield window after the jab and break their shield provided the bucket is strong enough. This is more of a mix up though, as it will not cover spot dodges or rolls perfectly. Use with caution. One other setup that is very useful is up throw to up B to bucket at very low percents. This setup does 10% more than a simple down throw helping to land more consistently against fast fallers, as well as ensuring stocks from buckets that normally wouldn't be strong enough to kill from zero from just a down throw alone. Of course, since bucket is so fast, it can be used as an out of shield option. Game Watch's jump squat is 5 frames, so it'll take a minimum of 7 frames to get bucket out of shield. For reference, that is as fast as Sheik's nair out of shield. Of course, any bucket doing more than 50% will break a full shield anyway, which can net a stock just the same, especially with Game & Watch's smash attacks being so strong. As far as actually absorbing the projectiles go, you must take caution. Bucket has a first actionable frame of 50, meaning almost a second of lag after you pull it out, so it isn't something you can just flash up like PSI Magnet. Not to mention, when you absorb something, unless it fills the bucket full, that 50 frame lag will start over, leaving you vulnerable to a punish. Right here, I'm not holding the B button down at all, I simply press down B once, and as you can see, I get punished hard for it. You can help alleviate this problem by doing a bucket drift backwards, putting some space between you and the opponent. To perform a bucket drift, simply start jumping in the direction you want to drift and bring out the bucket about halfway up your jump arc. You don't have to be very precise with how you catch the projectile, as the area of absorption is actually pretty forgiving. If you want, you can do it immediately after you jump to perform a wave dash action. But because Bucket is so laggy, this tech really doesn't have any application. What does, however, is the fact that Bucket stalls your vertical momentum. This can be useful in certain situations, like aerial stalls off stage and above your opponent. This also allows you to turn around and punish with a different move. It is also very useful for mixing up your opponent from a grounded state, making them often overshoot you and miss their conversion. If you use Bucket twice in the air, it will actually carry your double jump momentum, allowing for some pretty crazy recoveries and stalls. As well as some semi-useless under the stage shenanigans. Bucket starts absorbing on frame 7, 
a bit faster than Palutena's Reflect, but slower than Fox's Shine. You'll have to be at a decent distance to absorb projectiles on reaction. However, once you do absorb something, you'll get a short period of intangibility. Nothing can interact with you. This can trip up overzealous opponents who try to bait you into absorbing something unsafely. And it can also get you out of sticky situations like PK and Arcfire. If you find yourself fighting a Game & Watch and want to punish an absorption, just remember to wait for the flashing to stop before you attack. Finally, while possible, I wouldn't recommend trying to Gimp Nest by bucketing PK Thunder. Usually, you just grab the tail, giving you a quick, weak bucket and allowing Nest to recover. It's really better just to use forward air or back air to Gimp, or using a wind box to trick the Nest up. If you must steal his recovery, maybe for style or desperation purposes, then I recommend going underneath Ness, as the tail will be out of your way. This could get you killed, however, as the lag from absorbing could cause you to fall into the blast zone, but still, it is pretty funny. Alright, and with that, that concludes my guide on the ins and outs of Game & Watch's Oil Panic. I hope you learned a thing or two, I know I sure did, labbing and researching for this video. If you have any questions on any guide I do, or any suggestions for future ones, uh, simply leave it in the comments or tweet me at this handle. It doesn't have to be character specific, and I do already have a couple ideas already. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching, I'll see you later.